This instructional video is an overview of the Scenario Analysis Worksheet tab. The Scenario Analysis is a critical part of your plan because this is where you can test the importance and sensitivity of all major assumptions and the impact they have on your plan. First, to orient you to the layout, the baseline scenario consists of the values copied and pasted as paste special values from the corresponding rows on your Summary Worksheet tab. You will want to do this once you've input your most likely scenario assumptions. The Results section is automatically pulling in the dynamic values from the Summary tab, so any changes you make to the assumptions below on the Scenario Analysis tab will automatically be shown here in the Results section, whereas your baseline output will not change once you've copied and pasted the values there from the Summary tab prior to making any assumption changes. The Variance section simply calculates the variance between your baseline plan and the results due to your changed assumptions. The next section consists of the most critical assumptions in your plan, and as we've referenced throughout the videos and in the instructions on each page, this is the worksheet that these assumptions are inserted and then they drive the various components of the entire model. This way, as you make changes, you can immediately see the impact of those changes on the scenario analysis. Any changes made in these blue cells will immediately ripple throughout the entire plan and return the overall impact in the result and variance sections above to show you the impact of that change. As an active angel investor and investment banker, this is my favorite part of the plan because it enables me to quickly test scenarios such as what if sales are much lower than expected or what if costs are higher than expected, etc. Let's change a few assumptions and see what the impact is to the overall business plan. For example, let's change the down payment from 10% to 25% on the debt assumptions table to see what the overall impact is. As you can see, total cash at the end of the period changes from $3.5 million to approximately $3 million, or a little bit less than half a million dollar change. Overall, the total preferred return multiple for external investors really has very minimal impact. And the impact for the total founders and management value, again, is a very small impact. What we can take away from this is that your business plan assumptions are not that sensitive to a change in down payment on debt. Let's return that assumption to 10% to get back to our baseline. Now let's change interest rate from 10% to 15% to see how sensitive the overall plan is to a change in interest rate. As we change that to 15%, we can see that the impact is slightly less than the impact we just saw on increasing down payment from 10 to 25%. But again, a very minimal impact to the plan. And the main thing you want to focus on is what is the impact to external investors if you're having external investors. Because a major theme is for the investors to see what happens in terms of the sensitivity of all of your major assumptions. Again, let's return that to 10% interest rate to get back to our baseline. Now let's take a look at lower sales. Let's take our sale price per unit for those sold kiosks from $70,000 to $63,000. In other words, what if the sale price is 10% lower than currently assumed? As we make that change, we can now see that the impact is quite a bit more dramatic than the debt assumptions impact. In this case, we have cash and cash equivalents going down a little bit more than two and a half million in the year 2017 and we see the total preferred return multiple going down by a multiple of 1.1x. So instead of making 7.2x on their money, external investors will only make 6.1x. And you can see the total founders and management value being reduced to 10.9 million or a reduction of 3.3 million overall. So the business plan is much more sensitive to a change in the sale price of sold kiosks. Let's now return that to 70,000 to get back to our baseline. Okay, now let's check the servings per month. The plan currently assumes 1,800 servings per month are going to be served from the kiosk. Let's take that down 10% as well to see what happens there. When we reduce that to 1,620 servings per month, now we see that the plan is even more sensitive to that change. So, so far the most sensitive part of our business plan is the number of servings per month. Again, let's take that back to the 1,800 core assumption to get back to our core business model. Now let's check price. Let's take price down on the per serving pricing from $550 to $5, in other words, a 10% decrease. And again, a fairly dramatic change, but not quite as sensitive as the number of servings. Let's again return that to $5.50, our planned assumption. And let's now take a look at the cost of our kiosks. And let's assume that the cost of each kiosk that we purchase or that we sell is going to be increased by 10%. So in other words, I'm testing the sensitivity of a 10% unfavorable move in our assumptions. So as we change the cost of goods sold per kiosk to 38,500, we now see the impact of that. And again, fairly significant. 
So, so far what we see is a sensitivity to the cost changes and number of servings and price per serving are fairly significant. The changes to our debt assumptions are quite a bit less significant. Now we can change any other changes in the assumptions as we see here in the light blue sales and you can do combination of changes. What if the number of units sold is down? What if the cost goes up? What if the price we sell them for goes down? What if the price per serving goes down, etc.? And through doing that, create kind of a worst case scenario and see then what your cash requirements are. Let's take a quick look at how that works. Let's go ahead and take our cost per unit to 45,000 to see a more dramatic increase. Now we see a $11.3 million impact on preferred equity value. We see a total cash and cash equivalents down 8.7 million out in the out years and founders and management value down 8.2 million. Let's now go to the cash flow tab and see what the overall impact is on cash because here's a key part of the how to use the model. As we make changes like that, we want to see what the overall impact is on cash and potentially we need additional cash due to these changes. Now in this case, the model would say that we actually dipped down to 31,000 in cash at a low point right before our venture capital investment and then we also dip into the negative range in the out months and never fully recover and start to add cash until way out into August of 2017. So this is a good way to use the scenario analysis tab. Make your assumptions, see the overall changes, but always check the cash month by month by sliding through the plan on the cash flow tab to see the overall impact. As always, we've included an instruction section to step you through the few easy steps to complete this part of your plan.